Hello everyone, welcome to today's video and in this video I'll be talking about uh, how you can uh, review a particular research paper. In any scientific field, we get a lot of opportunities to review research papers that are being submitted by various labs and depending upon our uh, research interest and expertise, we can get specific research articles, journals, they will invite you to review specific uh, research articles. And then, you know, if you accept that inv invitation, you have to review that particular research article in a, in a very defined process. So we are going to discuss about that in this video. Uh, I'll tell you what are the key pointers, what are the different aspects you should be paying very, very close attention to. And by understanding that you should be able to better prepare yourself as as a reviewer. For this, I have a short presentation that I've created and I'll share that presentation with you along with all the pointers that uh, that are there and we'll discuss each point uh, and we'll try to understand what is the significance of that in the, in the uh, context of a particular reviewer. So before we start the presentation, I have a quick request that I want to make. If you're new to the channel, then please do subscribe to the channel. I would like to thank our sponsors, Consensus, for sponsoring our content. And if you're not aware about Consensus, let me tell you what Consensus is in a very, very short video. Meet Consensus, the intelligent way to search for scientific research. Type in a question and let Consensus instantly sort and summarize trusted research findings all in one place. No more endless scrolling with cons Consensus. You find what you need fast, clear, and verified. Compare studies effortlessly, Consensus allows you to analyze research from various sources side by side, helping you to make informed decisions quickly. Personalize your research experience, create profiles that save your preferences, making it easier to access your most relevant topics. Collaborate seamlessly, share your findings with colleagues, and collaborate in real time, ensuring everyone is on the same page. Get Consensus today and simplify your research journey. I hope you like the idea of consensus and uh, if you want to get the premium subscription, I have a code that is waiting for you in the description box. Please check it out. You can, you can use the code to get the maximum discount uh, on the premium subscription for consensus. Okay, let's start with the presentation. So as you can see the title, uh, Research Paper Peer Review Process. So in this one, I'll be talking about how a particular peer or a particular expert can uh, review the research papers that are published in that particular area. Uh, suppose you are the expert in that particular domain and what are the things that you should be doing uh, when you get a paper and you have the responsibility to review uh, that particular research paper. So there are a few things that I'll be uh, discussing uh, right over here. So we'll start with the first one, which is uh, to understand the research question. So this is this is the, the, the basic thing that whenever you get a paper, you need to understand what is the research question. So first job is to identify that particular research question and the research objectives that are there in that particular research study. So identify what is, what is the research objective and what is the research question that is being asked in that particular paper. Most probably reading the abstract will give you an idea that what is uh, the research uh, question. And if it is not clear, then you need to put that comment that authors, they need to mention what is the research question that they are trying to ask. Most of the time title, most of the time abstract will give you a good idea about the research question. Next point is the question should be clear. Now, Sometimes what happens is authors, they have no idea what is the research question and uh, the clarity is also very, very, uh, you know, it's not clear that what is the research question and also at the same time, it's not significant. So you need to make sure the research question that they are asking is significant. That means uh, you're working in that area and you think that the, the study that has been focused to answer something or to address a gap should be significant. So that is the another criteria that you have to evaluate and then relevance. So in this one, as you can see, there are few important points that uh, basically you need to, uh, you know, first review in that particular research study. The first one is clear and concise research question statement should be there or the objectives, they should be they should be clear and then they should be significant also means whenever that study is being published in a particular journal, journal should have a significant impact of that particular by publishing that particular study. That is why they, they you know, tend to look for those kind of studies and then it should be relevant also. So this is 
the first aspect which is understand the research question very very critically when you get a uh, research manuscript let's move on to the second one which is now you will be getting a particular manuscript so the manuscript will be in the pdf format or maybe in the word document and then you can have supplementary information so this is what you will get right and and then and that manu manuscript will have title abstract sometime author author affiliation and all all those things may or may may not be present but definitely you will have a title and abstract so now your job is to critically see what is there in the abstract and what are the things that you should be looking for uh, in the abstract in the title so abstract should summarize the entire paper so what is an abstract abstract is basically the shortest form of the research paper so your, your abstract or the abstract that you are reviewing should reflect reflect the entire summary of the paper so that is a very very important point so it should summarize the paper in a very concise and a very you know very very clear way next is yeah clarity and conciseness so the abstract should not be uh, you know where you have a lot of introduction but very very little results because in manuscript what you have is you have title you have abstract you have introduction you have uh, tales and methods you have results discussion and sometimes you have conclusion future aspect so all those things should be there in that abstract and it should be made it should be made in a way where everything is mentioned in a proportional way you should not have too much of an introduction and then very little of the method and results so all those things should be properly arranged so that is the structure of the abstract and now the title title is very very important title whenever you you read a particular title title should reflect reflect the core of that particular study so that means the core focus so this is very very important the core focus of the study should be reflected in the in the title all right now let's move on to the next one so the next part obviously is the introduction in the introduction there are few things you need to understand first is the background so the background background of the study as well as the significance or, or the rationale of the study should be mentioned very very clearly so introduction is very important but you need to make sure that too much discussion of the specific uh, topic too much detailed discussion of the specific topic should not be there too much you know overview or superficial information should not be there so you have to make that balance that every time you are reviewing that particular paper you should have uh, the the information the background information very good background information should be there in the introduction and then introduction should also tell you some of the uh, you know research gap if there is a gap that should be mentioned in the introduction so this is how you can you can you can structure the article and or you can suggest the changes to structure that particular article research gap as as this is what i've just mentioned right research gap that means why the research was done that, uh, to answer a specific question that is not known so it's as a reviewer it's your responsibility to also find out if there is any research that is been published already and that should be cited sometimes what happens is author trying to maybe hide some of the studies that are very similar to their own studies why because if 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 uh, reviewers find that they will say that immediately they will say that this uh, article or similar article is been or similar studies been published in uh, journal xyz so it is very very important that you need as a reviewer you also need to do dig out some papers do some search uh, to find out there should not be any similar articles published in 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 the literature if there is any then you need to mention to the author that uh, either they need to cite that right or they need to mention that what is the difference between that particular article so it's very very important that the research gap should be there and you should not find any similar articles that are uh, close uh, to that particular study so that is the responsibility of the reviewer they they need to do that and uh, next is hypothesis so most of the time in the introduction hypothesis will be provided objectives uh, will be uh, mentioned they should be clearly stated so by reading the introduction we should get an idea that these are the objectives and this is the hypothesis that that uh, the researcher is trying to uh, formulate and trying to you know get the answer of that particular hypothesis so this is the introduction and how a reviewer should review the introduction now let's move on to the the next slide okay the next slide that is uh, is devoted to materials and methods as as a reviewer it is our responsibility to find out whether the methods and the materials that is being used in the study 
they are of good quality because you need to ask them if that is not mentioned you need to ask to the author that you, they should provide what is the source of that material and then you need to see that the the source of the material is of high quality and then suitability of the method so when when that is done the material is being uh, you know mentioned everything is mentioned because sometimes what happens is maybe one another author is trying to repeat that uh, protocol in the lab and if the details of the materials is uh, is missing then what happens the author is is not going to reproduce the results so it's very very important that details of the material is provided catalog number of the chemicals they are provided company name is provided you know all those informations should be there instrument details model number all those things should be there Next is suitability of the methods. As a reviewer, then your job is also to find out whether the method that is being used is suitable even, or it's just they have that tool, that is why they just wanted to involve that uh, method in their paper. This should not be the case. Relevance of that particular method should be clearly, clearly stated. So, and, and the result should also reflect that, right? It should not be random. So it should be justified. Now, clarity and detail, that is what I mentioned to all the steps that are involved. Let's say a particular protocol is being followed where temperature is should be should be mentioned very, very clearly steps, incubation time, temperature, all those things should be clearly mentioned so that anyone who try to, uh, you know, reproduce that particular study should be able to reproduce it without any issue. Okay, next is uh, data collection. Now, whenever uh, any material or any method is going to be followed, the, the, the authors, they are going to collect uh, the, the data and data collection procedure that should be clearly stated and analysis, how the analysis was done, that should also be clearly mentioned. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. Okay, obviously after uh, methods, we have the results section of the manuscript. Many times results section will be incorporated along with the discussion part also. So let's see what are the points we have. Clarity and uh, the logically uh, the presentation of the results should be there. So author should present the results clearly. Method should not be uh, repeated in the results section. So many times this error you will see all the time that people are going to repeat the materials and method section in the results and they will also repeat the results section in the discussion one. It's a very, very thin line as 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 a reviewer, you need to identify that whether they are repeating those things, then you have to suggest it should not be it should not be repeated. So clarity should be there and, and the logical presentation of the result should be there. So, for example, if the method is being followed, uh, the first method and giving some results out and the result one is linked with the result two. So it should be presented first. So the, the flow should be clear. Next is figures, tables, statistics. So all those images that are being created you need to look for the quality of the images you need to look for the data is is not too crowded the the visibility of the text that is there in the image that should be clear all those things you have to mention because somebody will read that article and if, if the figure is not clear if the images are not clear if they are blurry legends are not clear all those things should be clearly clearly mentioned and you can uh, you know this is this is a good idea that you can you can start uh, with the figures and see if the information is clear to you even without even reading the method section. Uh, the results should also, you know, support the objective that objectives that are mentioned in the introduction. So you can go back to the introduction and see if there is any relationship between the, the objective and the results you are getting. And it should be reflected. Uh, every time author should also mention that this was the hypothesis and this is what we got and how it is connected. So this is how you review the result part as well as the discussion part. Okay, so that was a kind of introduction regarding how you can, uh, you know, overview the manuscript because we are not discussing about a particular uh, specific uh, area here, chemistry, physics, biology, but I'm just pointing it out, uh, the general aspects of uh, how to review a manuscript. So here, another aspect is language. That That is very, very important. You know, writing quality as well as clarity is very, very important. Typos should not be there. If you are able to identify three to four typos, that means you have to tell immediately uh, in, in your comment that this manuscript should be, uh, you know, checked for uh, English very, very clearly. And uh, another thing that you have to look for is the language should be clear and concise. It should not have very, very complex sentences and you should be able to understand what is being referred in every sentence. Unnecessary jar jargon should not be mentioned. You can point that one out also. Proper grammar and the structure of sentences and they, they are really, really important and typos should not be there. Being an, being an author, you should also you know understand this if you are a research student. 
you should not have typos, spelling errors, grammatical errors should not be there. Now we have so many tools, you know, we have so many tools, as I already told you, you have AI based tools, you have consensus, so many tools are there that will help you in your writing process. And then you can proofread your uh, whatever you have written by using grammar, uh, grammar uh, correction softwares. There are so many softwares that are available. Many of them are free of cost and they will proofread your manuscript and you will not have any error. All those things, writing quality and clarity should be handled very, very carefully. And as, as a reviewer, you need to identify if there is any error like this, you need to point it out by writing specific sentence. You can give page number, you can give line number and say the error is like this. It should be rectified straight away. So the next one is the reference section. In any manuscript, you will find references. This is very, very important to cite if, if there is any method that is being used, any data that is uh, in previously being published, all those things should be there. And in references, what you need to look for as a reviewer is references should be up to date. You need to look for whether authors are, uh, you know, citing latest information or it's old information two, three, four, five years back you need to look for those updated references and also cover key studies. Sometimes there are key studies in particular area, key researchers that are working in that particular area. You need to mention that the, these studies should be cited and there should be a balance between primary and secondary sources. So that you need to take care. You need to understand if there are primary sources, if there are secondary sources, you have how many review articles are getting cited, how many research articles are getting cited. And you need to also see whether the, the references they are uh, you know structurally they are correct according to the journal if there is any error you can clearly point it out and you can ask uh, the authors to correct all those things so this is all about the reference section so now let's talk about the overall contribution and the impact so novelty should be there and significance so whenever there is any any article that is getting published the, the aspect that is very very important it should be new it should be novel so you need to look for that you can uh, you know, search for similar studies, similar patents. And then if there is nothing like that, that means it's novel and it's also significance. It's answering a specific, very, very important question. So that should be carefully observed uh, and contribution to the knowledge. Yes. So obviously when, whenever there is any research study that is being done, if it is noble and significant, it is going to contribute. So you need to see that it should contribute to the knowledge and it, it should enhance the knowledge in that particular field. And then, uh, you know, it should have uh, implications whether practical, whether theoretical, theoretical, all those things, implication should be, you know, in, in your aspect, they should be there. So this is, this is how you can, you know, see overall contribution and impact of that particular research article in that area. All right. So the last point, which is feedback. I have seen many times, you know, whenever a particular study is being submitted for, for review, what happens is, you know, editor in chief or the editor is interested in that particular study. That is why they, they sent the study for, for a particular review. Most of the time it happens. If there is a paper which is not, uh, you know, up to the quality or it's not relevant, so it will not be submitted to a peer review process. So what happens is when you get a peer, uh, when you get a paper for peer review, most of the time the article is, is good. So there are three things you can do. You can, uh, you know, do straight rejection depending on the quality. Sometimes you get very, very bad uh, research papers. You have to straight away reject them. Next is major rev revision. You can provide uh, your comments and tell the authors to do the major revision where you can suggest many changes that they need to incorporate, many experiments they need to do. Third is minor revision where you think manuscript is, is, is in a good format and then you can suggest minor changes and then authors will do the minor changes and then uh, the study should be able to, uh, you know, publish in that particular journal. But the point is whenever you give a feedback, the feedback should be constructive, right? It should not be discouraging to the authors. You should provide constructive feedback that will improve the quality of the manuscript, that will enhance the, the clarity, that will, uh, you can suggest experiments that will help the, the authors to improve the quality of the manuscript. So the constructive feedback is very, very important when you are providing comments to the author. Now highlight the strength. You can also mention these are the strengths and, and these are the limitation you can also mention and the key contribution of, of that particular paper to the field. You can also mention all those things. And then you need to have that, uh, you know, it's good to have the polite as well as the balanced uh, critique kind of nature. So I think it is really, really important to have that polite attitude. And at the same time, you can have, uh, you know, 
balanced critique to the study and you should definitely highlight all the points but at the same time you can provide the constructive feedback uh, to the authors all right so that was all from my side i hope the suggestions the key points that i provided you will help you in your review process and there are so many journals that will help you in understanding the review uh, reviewer role and the process of how to review a particular research paper all right everyone thank you so much for watching the video i'll meet you in the next one till then take care everyone